stage seven, Zuarat Tuatar, the longest special in the entire rally. 450 kilometers of classic Mauritania, fast stony tracks, camel grass, and those dunes. After a mammoth liaison section that started even for the stars at three o'clock in the morning the previous day, on stage seven, they were only a couple of kilometers from the bivouac. A chance to discuss tactics, Esteve and Pasteur. What could the Spaniard do about his compatriot? Cyril Dupre saying we're expecting this to be a huge stage. Going to see how things uh, work out. Challenging Como is going to be difficult for me. Uh, I'll be starting in 11th place. I just hope there won't be too much dust. Not in a good position to challenge anybody at the moment, he says. Well, this is from a man who rode injured through half of last year's event. Well, Dupre was right to be worried. The opening passages of the event crossing the railway line that feeds Suarat's iron ore supplies to the rest of the world. The lead group had broken down into four. Esteve, Castor were joined by Francisco Lopez, the Honda rider from Chile, and Oliver Seta, who a couple of days ago lost an hour to drop him down out of the lead group. But Hal Anders was having a good early run. And of course, there was always coma. At this stage, there was a decent enough breeze to get rid of the sand. Cyril Dupre, the Gawas KTM rider, who worried about being able to challenge anybody, was leading the second group. Thierry Bertis, the beat specialist, was there. Yanis Vinters of Latvia and David Fretinier on the Gawas Yamaha. In these wide open desert stretches, even with the roadbook, it's not always easy to make sure you've gone the right way. And the dunes just help to lead you further astray. Should you follow the leader or follow your nose? In this case, follow the leader seems to work. Kummer controlling the pace. Jolly Villadoms alongside him in the lead group as they arrive at the passage control. PC1, a chance to refuel bodies as well as machines, food, water and petrol. And in the brief respite from the punishment of the road, a chance to discuss tactics and what to expect from the stage coming up. Again, Castor goes over as Esteve crams in some calories. At this stage, Cyril Dupre was the man with the fastest speed through the stage. But there was trouble in store for one of the lead group. Jordi Villadoms crashed at speed. The Spaniard had been first on hand a couple of days ago at two major incidents and now he himself was helped by Red Bull rider Chris Blaze. I see everything. The bike was way in the air, flipped six, seven times. Pieces flying everywhere, so got really lucky. I'm glad, I'm glad he's be all right. Well, Villadoms has broken his left arm at the elbow. He's fractured his right hand and dislocated his right ankle. And like the casualties from yesterday, he too will be flown to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands for overnight attention. Chris Blaze stayed with him until medical crews arrived and he dropped a lot of time on the stage. But in those instances, everybody thinks of the other rider rather than themselves. So with Blaze out of the lead hunt, the battle was on to chase down Coma. And then they hit the dunes. Esteve is Coma's arch rival in the standings. 
And as Estevay powered on, the rally leader got stuck deep in the flowers fine sands they call fesh fesh. This isn't sand as we know it, this is powder. Coma lost a minute or so there, but he struggled throughout the June sections today, while Esteve seemed able to find a cleaner route through. The dunes are about experience. Like a sailor reading the wind on the water, the riders have to know where they're likely to find grip, and where they're likely to sink till their knees. Depre was making good work of it as well. He started in 11th place, but despite that, the man who lay fifth overnight wasn't averse to having a tumble himself. In these conditions, it's very easy to lose minutes and to lose a lot more. Following on other riders' tracks over the top is always a risky gamble. It shows they made it to the top, what it doesn't tell you is what's off the other side. Palandus Olivaceta having a good run through. He too made up a lot of time today, coming home second on the stage behind winner Depre. It doesn't give him back the hour or so he lost in Morocco, but it does help with the confidence. Third place, David Castor. Obviously the notes he swapped with teammate Esteve certainly helped in one direction. And Chris Blaze stopping to help a fellow rider. Came home still in 12th position. But that half an hour, by the way, had cost him. Well, after a ferocious dust storm swept across the stage, forcing the helicopters to avoid it, the race was stopped about 100 kilometers short. But Cyril Depre was the stage winner from Palandos Olivaceta with David Castor in third, Esteve in fifth position and Comar struggled home sixth, 12 minutes adrift. Mark Comar, the overall leader, but his gap is reduced. Crazy, said Debre. I got the feeling that I just uh, wasn't going to be able to ride anymore. On the dunes I got stuck four times more than last year in a whole Dakar. Quite unbelievable, the sand was so soft, the camel grass so hard, and us, we are exhausted. In the first uh, five kilometers I was lost, and then Depre and Pretinia came, and then uh, I tried to follow Depre all day, and I made it, and, but uh, without him I could not go so fast, but that was a great day for me. I hope Jordi's fine, he said, Jordi Villadoms, when I saw him on the ground it was really tough. Watching a teammate lying on the ground like that. All right, we're professional riders, we train for this race. You know when you say a privateer on the ground, you think to yourself that's because they lack our training. But when you see a professional, we know we go fast, we know we get hurt if we fall. But it's always a bit scary. 